Hello and welcome to this introduction to Overdrive session. Um, the event today will focus on the use of Overdrive as an education resource portal, enabling you to share information with contacts both inside and outside your organization. Um, my name is Sean Power and I also have my colleague Ian Weatherhog with me. So say hello, Ian. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Good, thanks for that. Um, Ian is the Chief Technical Officer for Overdrive and they'll be helping with any questions raised during the session. So if you do have any questions uh, during the event, then please use the chat box on the right hand side of the screen and we'll answer any questions raised at the end of the session. And we'll reply directly after the session for those we don't get to answer during the event, but hopefully we'll have time for them all. Uh, the event today will last around 30 minutes and we'll make a recording available afterwards so you can review the information uh, yourself or share it with your colleagues after the event. So Overdrive is designed for organizations using G Suite or Google Workspace as it's now called, as you may be aware. And that's either the education or corporate version of G Suite. And this is because it's deeply integrated with Google and it lets you create a website or a portal automatically from content held within Drive and elsewhere across G Suite and even beyond. With Overdrive, you can create great looking web pages and portals without the need for specialist skills. You simply decide what content you wish to share, choose from a wide range of ways to display that content to suit your audience, and then add in your users. And you'll see how this works in the demonstration as we go through the event today. The users will have easy online access to the resources and information that they need. And also any site created by Overdrive is automatically mobile friendly. So your users can access the site on any device that they choose. A key strength of Overdrive is the range of potential uses available such as intranets, extranets, education portals, or event sites, et cetera. And as you'll see in the demonstration, a site can be created very quickly to share information with people, again, inside and outside the organization. These are some popular uses specifically for the education market. And one of the things we find most interesting in this sector is the variety of audiences to whom information is shared. Each of these groups can have their own dedicated site, or we can have one site which has its sections segmented so they're only visible to relevant visitors. Overdrive is hosted on Google Cloud Platform, and Google uses GCP to host its own well-known services, such as Gmail, Drive, YouTube, Search, etc. And GCP provides global scalability and world-class security for Overdrive and allows our team to concentrate on adding new and exciting features to the product. We have Overdrive customers worldwide. And here's a selection from different industries and locations and also different uses of Overdrive, as you can see. With some customers such as Tarmac and Western Homes, we have created customized Overdrive solutions to meet their specific requirements. And Overdrive sites can be made public on request. And a good example of this is UNESCO Sardona, which uses Overdrive to share large quantities of scientific research information. Here are more Overdrive customers in the education sector. We have a number of school districts using Overdrive for a variety of purposes, as well as individual schools, colleges, and universities. And education and training providers in the private sector also benefit from Overdrive's unique ability to share information quickly and securely to their chosen audience. So hopefully that has given you some background information on Overdrive. And we now have two demonstrations for you to help you bring everything to life. The first is a recorded video of the site creation process. Then I'll show you a few features of Overdrive on a public education demonstration site. So first, the video.
With Overdrive, you can easily set up a smart-looking and useful site in minutes using existing content from Google Drive. We're a further education college, and we need to connect with a wide variety of stakeholders, not just our students and staff, but parents and alumni, and also the wider community. Today, I'm going to create a student portal to share all kinds of information, resources and assets with our students, not just learning content, but academic calendars and social events, campus news and other student support and guidance. Overdrive sites are built from Google Drive folders, and all of the content that I'm going to need is right here. Once I've connected Overdrive to Drive, I can use this menu to both create new sites and jump across to existing ones. As you can see, my site has been automatically created using the content in Google Drive. Notice how all of the folders from Drive are now items in the menus. And the content of the folders has also been brought across as pages in those menus, and they'll stay in sync if I make changes in here or in Drive. Now, anyone inside, or if I choose, outside the college, has access to these files without having to use Drive. I don't have to waste time emailing the latest curriculum info or extension work to anyone because the latest versions live right here and can be accessed 24-7. So let's go back to the home page and start fixing it up. The Assets folder is where I'm going to keep logos and other files needed for the site, and I don't need it to appear in the menus, so I'll switch it off like this. My site design is looking a bit basic, so I'm going to find our college logo. and use Template Designer to pick a template that suits our college branding. These advanced settings give me lots of control over the design and layout if I want to go further. Now, I'm going to press the pencil icon over here to activate Page Builder and start adding a few elements. I'm going to start with an image box and pick something a bit inspirational to brighten things up. Now I'll replace this folder tile with Calendar Contacts a Twitter feed, and a YouTube video. You can include easily any number of calendars that show what campus activity is happening when, which is a really useful way to keep everyone in the loop. And I'll bring in these existing Google contacts as a quick go-to place for students to find whoever they need. Bring in this welcome video. And I'll finish with a Twitter tile. So everyone can follow what's going on with the students at Sanford College. My homepage is in better shape. So let's take a quick look at some other content. This folder contains everything that I want to share with my students on education resources. And there's a variety of content from curriculum PDFs to coursework support, including slide decks, docs and sheets and other helpful info. It's a kind of mini learning resource center. The content is already in Drive. This is just a much better way of sharing it. Users with edit permissions, like other members of academic, pastoral or admin team, are able to create and upload new files.
and edit existing ones. All the campus news will appear here. These are all Google Docs and there's a choice of how we can display them. So I think we'll go for blog view. Then you see a thumbnail image and the text. And if you click on it, you get the whole article. And this area of the site includes other support information that our college pastoral team have dropped into drive folders for the site. And finally, we're in the alumni section, which is where our past students can connect with our current students and with the college. Access can be easily controlled in the user settings, and there's a choice of login methods too. So, there we go. With an area dedicated to parents and links to the wider community, we've got a smart, user-friendly student portal set up in minutes, sharing a huge variety of education resources with stakeholders in a quick and easy way. Get started at overdrive.io today. Great, so hopefully that has given you an idea as to how we can create sites very quickly and also some of the features that you can add into your site. What I'm going to do now is show you what a finished education portal could look like and some of the other features particularly relevant for this type of site. So if, remember, if you do have any questions as we proceed, just pop them into the chat box and we'll answer them at the end of the session. This is our demonstration education site, and we'll send you the link to this site after today's session so you can visit it yourself. And it's created to demonstrate what a finished education portal could look like, and in this case for the fictitious college called Sanford. For this part of the event, I'll show you a handful of the many features available which are useful when using Overdrive as an education portal, just to build on the previous video. There are multiple ways in which your selected users can sign into the site, not just via Google. We have the ability to allow them to access the site using Microsoft or Facebook credentials, or even just simply email and password. And the ability to allow non-Google users to access your OverDrive portals make them great for any institution who wants to share their information to a variety of different audiences quickly and simply. And we also have the opportunity to segment the information on the site too. So certain sections may only be visible to certain users. And this works very well for institutions who can create a site for all their users and then restrict access to the information pertinent to each user, such as students, parents, staff, etc. And alternatively, the licensing model allows any number of sites to be created so one can one having one sorry having one site per audience is also possible. When you visit the site, you'll see this uh, this tool which will take you through some of the features. I'll just close that tool for now, just so we've got a clean uh, experience. So this is a home page, um, which is very similar to the one we saw on the previous site. For this site, we have kept the home page very simple as it is just link, has links to the information elsewhere on the site. And the site design itself, everything on the site is customizable. The sections of the site, the colors, the log, logos, the template and design can all be tailored to your needs. It is important on sites like this, which tend to have lots of information on them, and that your users can quickly find and access the information you make available across the whole of the site. The search feature does this exactly. Click on the search, and I'll search in this case very quickly just for art. And I get a quick look at some of the results where I can go into a deeper search if necessary. The results not only show the assets which are within the search criteria in their title, but also those with the search terms within the content of the documents, such as these uh, curriculum agendas. We can also see the type of asset in the search results, so we can easily identify the asset we are searching for. As we saw in the previous demonstration, we can automatically sync files between Google Drive and OverDrive. 
And once your files are in your OverDrive site, they can be published directly to Classroom, either as assignments, questions, announcements, or course materials. So here I will send all these materials to my Art Year 6 class. This publishes a link in the, in the class back into OverDrive site, which completes the publishing process. And it ensures that students can easily find the information that they need. This process is particularly useful when using OverDrive as a curriculum development portal, where all course materials are curated in the OverDrive site before publishing. The course can be designed and created outside of Classroom and then distributed when ready. It also enables, enables us to publish multiple files at once to Classroom, whereas Drive only allows one file at a time. Discussions are an important element of most education sites and OverDrive caters for these very well. As well as providing the option of including discussions on pages with other content, such as a document or an image, specific discussion pages can be created, such as this general one here for the art and design course. These discussion pages can either be public, so everyone on the site can see them, or they can be private and restricted to certain users. For example, a staff forum may only be accessed by staff members. We can collect information from your site users in a variety of ways. And here we are showing a, a Google form on this application page here. And this is one of the ways in which users can access information and we can gather information from your users on the site. And there are other ways as well. And for those of you who know Google Forms, you will know that the responses can be stored in Google Spreadsheets. And here on this page here, which again is a restricted page only for admins, we can see the responses uh, uh, on the spreadsheet embedded on the page. And we've got powerful sorting and filtering as well to help us find the information that we need. And some of the columns have been hidden to make it easy to read. So when I click on a row, I can see all the response data. So that's really all I wanted to show you on the education demo site for now. As I said, there are plenty of other features available which are contained within this public site. So once you've got the link, I'd encourage you to visit it after the event so you can see some of the other, other features that we haven't shown you as yet today. OK, so here's a quick summary of the main benefits of using OverDrive. And as you saw in the demonstrations, an OverDrive site can be created automatically using Google Drive folders and files. And building a site is fast and efficient compared with traditional methods. And also no specialist skills are required to do this. Many types of content can be transformed automatically into powerful and user-friendly web pages. And pages can be easily updated or maintained by editing the original file, either from the site itself or from Drive. And this sync between OverDrive and the source location enables the site to be automatically updated when content changes at either end. So now just a quick look at the licensing model for OverDrive. Now, the pricing sites start at 60 cents per month per user for education teams and departments. And we also have faculty and campus licensing available for larger numbers of users. The number of sites that can be created is unlimited, uh, which means that your users can create as many sites for as many different uses as they need under this licensing scheme. We've got further information on the pricing plans on our website, which is overdrive.io. And again, we'll send you the link to that after the event today. OK, so uh, we have time. Let's go through some uh, questions. Ian, have you got a juicy question that we can start with? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Lisa uh, has uh, uh, kicks off with, does it work both ways? In other words, if you update in the OverDrive site, 
will it also update what is in Google Drive? Um, yes, Lisa, absolutely. Um, the site reflects the drive structure. So if you create a page in Overdrive, um, uh, it'll make a folder in, um, in Drive. If you create files, you know, vice versa, if you upload files into a you know into an upload area in the overdrive site they will appear in the corresponding folder in drive so the two mirror each other that's the the principle of overdrive okay thank you uh question from jessica is there a trial period and can you explain the pricing structure i think we've been through the pricing structure uh, jessica if there's anything else uh, that you need on that just let us know when we go into details um, there is a trial period, so there's a free 30-day trial available. Uh, it's pretty much a full functional trial. There's one or two very minor features that you can't use, such as public sites, uh, but everything else is open to you. So you can create as many sites as you wish and share as many users within that 30-day period. And I'll um, include a link both in this session in a second and also uh, in our follow-up email to allow you to start that term, um, that process. Uh, question, uh, is there a maximum number of users per site? Uh, no, there isn't. So you can have as many users uh, accessing the site as you wish. And also, as I mentioned before, if you do have very, very large numbers of users, there may be an opportunity for you to split the site up into certain audiences and groups of users. So you could have a parent portal, you could have a, a staff site and, and a student site, or even split into year groups or grades or however you want to work that. So you've got complete flexibility in terms of how you manage that, which I think makes it uh, easy. Uh, question from Lisa, can students copy folders and the files within into their own Google Drive? Um, do you want to take that one, Ian? Um, yes. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the answer on that. I can't, um, obviously, we're, you know, we're showing um we're showing some other files and in some cases they can use those files as templates um you know for example they could click and and open a file and then choose make a copy um if it was a doc or, or something like that um we also have a um a, a copy uh button um next to next to files as well if you want to turn that on so that would probably be the right way to do it um, hopefully you'll hopefully you'll find uh, you'll find your way around them. But if not, give us a shout. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, question from Connie: uh, Is this useful for general businesses, i.e., uh, non-education related? Absolutely, Connie. Um, I would say um, probably the majority of our use cases are, are general business rather than education, but it's quite an even split. Um, there are some very specific education features. Uh, which aren't probably relevant for businesses, such as the, the classroom um, uh, integration, although that can be used for business as well. Uh, but exactly, you've got the same features. You create as many sites as you want. You're pulling your data from G Suite. You share it with users inside and outside your organization. And that applies to either business or, or education um, uh, requirements and situations. So absolutely, it's exactly the same. Um, okay, question from uh, Maha, uh, is it linked to all G Suite apps? Uh, yeah, pretty much as many as we can get hold of. So we've got contacts, calendar, maps, groups, obviously drive, docs, uh, contacts, which you've seen. So pretty much across the, uh, the G Suite um, suite of services, uh, we're, uh, we're pulling data and accessing through our OverDrive site. Uh, there is a question uh, from Rosanna. Uh, do you have reviewing preset sharing settings in each document or folder before you post it in OverDrive? Or would placing something in OverDrive potentially change sharing settings in a folder or document? Do you want to uh, pick that one up, Ian? Um, yes, sure. Um, yes, when you, um, uh, when, when you put a file into Drive, um, it will show up in OverDrive fairly quickly, um, and vice versa. The two the two do stay in sync. You can hide things in OverDrive. Um, so, 
if you want a uh, you know a draft article or something like that then um then hide it while you work on it the url will still work but only you know it's there um and then when you're ready you make it visible again and uh, and everybody can see it uh, yeah great that's uh, really good so question from jessica uh, does this create a unique website link once the site is ready uh, yes, it does. So you're allocated a, a, a kind of a random number for the site when you create the site, but you can actually change that to be a friendly URL. So it can be a domain in itself, or it can be a subdomain from your main institution domain if you want it to be. So uh, again, uh, you've got uh, you, you've got the flexibility on that side that uh, that you need. A uh, question from Kathleen: There appears to be a yearly plan. Uh, can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, yearly plan is uh, it's basically the same licensing structure. Um, uh, it's just you pay annually instead of uh, monthly. And so the commitment is a year instead of uh, uh, one month. And you get a little bit of discount uh, for, uh, for committing to a year. But essentially, it's the same service. So hopefully that's answered that one, uh, Kathleen. Uh, question from Connie, uh, simplest question with the biggest, uh, longest answer. Uh, what type of security do you have? Uh, thank you for that, Connie. Um, it's probably worthy of a longer conversation, but essentially uh, we're running on GCP in the main for most of the services on, um, uh, on Overdrive, which is where G Suite runs. Your data still resides within G Suite. So if it's in Drive, document it stays within Drive. So we pretty much follow the rules and the regulations from um, from Google and the GCP security. Um, Sean, said, uh, Sean, Connie might be asking about um, security, you know, access to the site. So um, we can uh, you can configure the site to allow, well, you can have a public site first of all that everybody can see, or you can require login, um, and the logins can be email and password or Google accounts, Facebook, um, that kind of thing. And um, uh, you can grant access to those users by um, adding them individually, or you can put in um, domain name, you know, your domain name. So everybody from, um, you know, your um, can, uh, can log into the site. Hopefully we've covered all possible bases <laughs> there, Connie. <laughs> yeah, very good. A uh, couple more questions. Question from Ginger. Maybe you said this, but the cost per user is only for logged in users, right? Not public browsing. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So if I'm logging into the site, that makes it effectively a, a private access, and that's when I need a license. But for a public site where you're happy for anybody to be able to find the information on the site, uh, it's okay for that information to be in the public domain, then those users don't log into the site and therefore don't need uh, a license. Uh, which uh, hopefully makes things easier. Uh, question, another question from Maha. How is it different from Drive? Uh, you'd like to convince your managers, uh, but you're looking for features to make it shine out and more uh, needed compared to Drive. Uh, do you want to take the first part of that um, in and hand over if uh, you need anything? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Maha, it's very different from Drive. Um, in that you're building sites, um, you know, you're building elegant looking sites um, that uh, could be, you know, used for, a, uh, you know, public facing sites for your institution or you're building, um, uh, you know, any, any kind of um, intranet, extranet, portal, whatever, um, uh, you know, and it's not just files, um, as well as the files and displaying the files in um, in in lots more different ways from um, from the way that ways that Drive does, um, uh, as well as making entire pages out of docs and things like that, um, you can have calendars and forms and contacts and photos and maps and you know and all sorts of stuff. So it's way way richer than Drive. Uh, great. Hopefully that's uh, that's answered that one. Um, question. I think final question coming up from uh, Rosanna. For clarification, do you mean everything in my drive will be automatically be connected to OverDrive? What if there are documents which, which are covered by privacy laws? Those shouldn't be on any website. Uh, yeah, good question, Rosanna. So you could have everything um, on your uh, drive connected with an OverDrive site and therefore visible, but that would be unusual. 
what typically happens is you would connect to a certain folder within your drive structure and only display that, that folder and its content. And all its subfolders. And its subfolders. Yeah. So and, you, and within within the drive use, you know, within the drive app, you know, in the drive web um, web app, you can pick on any folder and create an overdrive site from it in, you know, in a few moments. Um, so, uh, you know, that's the idea is that perhaps a particular um, uh, school grade or subject or project or or anything like that, you know, you 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 tend to build up a, a little folder structure within Drive in the first place with documents and things like that. And um, OverDrive will automatically generate a site from that structure and let you build it out and share it in a much more elegant way. Uh, yes, that's great. Uh, thanks for that. So again, one final question. Will you be sending uh, a recording after the event? Uh, yes, we will. So we'll be um, sending an email soon after the event with a recording and links to all the rele rele relevant sections. We'll leave the session running for a few minutes afterwards because I think there are a couple of questions that we can get to. So if there are any other questions that you've got, then um, throw them into the chat window and we'll uh, we'll pick them up. We missed one from Joe, which was, can we add and delete students as needed every semester and billing um, based on the number of users? Yes, Joe, based on the number of active users. So if you delete users, if you delete users, then you've got free licenses to use on fresh users. Okay, thanks for that, Ian. Okay, so um, here are some recommended next steps uh, when you're investigating OverDrive. As I mentioned, you could create a trial site, and I've put a link on the uh, on the on the screen. So just click on that link, and you'll start your st your trial. That's a thirty day, pretty much full functional trial. Um, after the session, as I said, we'll send you links to all the demonstration sites uh, that we have, including the education one. Uh, so you can visit them and uh, check out some of the other features. And if you do have more complex requirements. Uh, we can arrange uh, a call or a consultation with either ourselves or one of our partners. Uh, and we'll look at your requirements in detail and we'll advise you on the best approach. So if you've got large numbers of users or something specific in mind that you want us to cover, just again, drop us a note and we'll, uh, we'll happily pick that up with you. So we'll follow up with that information and just reply to that email if you need anything else. So all that remains to do, thank you, Ian, for uh, your time, and thank you, everybody, for attending today, and thank you for the questions. As I said, there's still some we've got to get through, so we will do. Uh, but if, if there's anything else, just reply to the email that was sent to you, and we'll pick it up from there. So thank you for your time.